Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our time of prayer this morning. Today is Wednesday of Holy Week, sometimes known as Spy Wednesday, when the role of Judas in salvation history is remembered. A vital part of the redemption story, Judas is often held up as the way not to do things. And yet without him, without this action, our story of salvation would not have unfolded in the way it did. And yet to quote a friend of a friend of mine, God draws straight with crooked lines. And we see this here. In a moment, I'm going to read today's gospel. And then we'll leave a couple of moments of silence for us to ponder what are the crooked lines in our lives this morning? The ones we can't see how they could possibly come together to make a way for God to act. And so we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we come to you in all our need. We come holding our life story, our relationships, and our very existence. We come in many ways. Many of us have lives that do not look like straight lines, lives that have taken many twists and turns like the Jewish nation wandering the desert. Help us to recognise that it is all holy ground. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. And Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. And so we'll take a couple of moments just to ponder what are the crooked lines in our lives this morning, the things we can't possibly see, how they might come together to make a way for God to act. Keep those in mind as we listen to the following. 
Judas, the money keeper, the firebrand, the one who wanted Jesus to be the warrior, the one to sweep away the foreign power and restore the Jewish nation. How dismayed must Judas have felt when Jesus did not do what he expected? Maybe even betrayed? When I wrote that sentence for this reflection, it took me by surprise somewhat. Is that a thing? Did G Judas feel betrayed by Jesus? Today's reflection is very much based on my own musings about how they got there. Judas and Jesus were intimate friends. How did they end up in this place where Judas sold him to the enemy? I really want to emphasize that these are my thoughts and if they're not helpful for you, then please leave them by the wayside and think no more of it. Expectation is a powerful thing. And when our expectations are not met in a way we anticipate or are crossed in some way, then often we are disappointed, sad, angry or jealous. These are emotions we push away in our effort to be kind and loving people as we were commanded yesterday. If we push them away, where do they go? I recently listened to a talk by the poet Adrian Scott who said, in the spiritual realm, there is no such thing as nowhere. It is usually because we push them away that emotions cause us so much problems. If we push them away, we have to expend a lot of energy to keep them away. And often when we lower our guard or get tripped up by something unexpected, these emotions pop up and cause havoc. How many times has it been the small thing that causes us to lose our temper? We all do it. Could this be what happened to Judas? I wonder how many times Judas had been irritated or saddened or frustrated, but chose not to say anything. Instead, pushing the emotion away until in this moment, when Jesus, the Messiah, who was going to save them all, rides into Jerusalem, not on a charger with an army at his back, but on a donkey. Not with a shout of triumph, but weeping for the city he loved. Does Judas choose this path of revenge in anger and disappointment of the unmet expectation? How many times have we done the same? I did it just this morning, where in my irritation and overwhelm, I chose the path of anger and blaming. Instead of explaining how it was for me this morning and asking for what I need, I grew irritated that those around me did not just meet it. My expectation was crossed, and in turn, I was angry. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people made a way for him. Jesus went to the temple and cleared the money changers from the Gentile court, making a way for the people to come and pray. Judas went to the high priest and made a way for Jesus to Calvary. God draws straight with crooked lines all of the time. And God can do that for us now. Lord, we bring to you all the places in our lives that do not look or feel redeemed. All the crooked places, the things that don't line up neatly as we wish, the things that make us angry, the times we have betrayed those we love in our anger, the things that cause us to be jealous, resentful or afraid, the things we weep over. We proclaim regularly that all is in your hands and all will be well. Help us to live it, to believe it in our marrow, that even in the dark places, even in this dark place, you are here weeping with us. We pray for broken relationships everywhere, for healing, for soothing and for grace. We place in your hands all the times we cannot forgive, the times we choose revenge, not peace the times we fail to trust, the times we fail to ask, but instead sit in our emotion, let it simmer, the times we miss each other and you, the times we act out our anger instead of acknowledging our hurt. And we ask you would draw straight with crooked lines and that we might trust you to do that. 
And we ask this in Jesus' name, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.